<clears throat> as promised in our last uh, problem, this one's going to be a little bit more involved. So I'm going to have three charges. So I'm going to have charges Q1, Q2, and Q3. Okay. And so Q1, Q2, Q3. And these two charges are separated from each other by a distance of two and a half meters. These two charges are separated from each other by a distance of 2.75 meters. And I want to know... Uh, uh, also, I need to tell you that Q1 is equal to 19.1 microcoulombs. Q2 is minus 17.7 microcoulombs. And Q3 is 10.2 microcoulombs. And so I want to know at some point directly above 1.88 meters above Q3, I want to know the direction and magnitude of the electric field right there. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we know if we got any kind of charge and we got some spot right there that the electric field in, in that spot is going to be equal to kq over r squared where r is that distance okay and the direction would be directed away from the charge now obviously if it's a negative charge negative away is towards the charge and so uh, that means that we can we can use that to sort of figure out how these things are going so that means we need to calculate the distances we need to find the distance r1 the distance R2 and R3. Okay, so clearly R3 is the easy one here. So R3 is 1.88 meters. R2, Pythagorean theorem, so that's the square root of 1.88 meter squared plus 2.75 meters squared. R3 is going to be the square root of 1.88 meter squared plus, and now we need to find the other distance. The other distance is going to be 5.25 meters squared. Okay, so that means we do the math, then R2 is going to be equal to 3.33 meters and our, our, sorry, that's R1. So R1 is going to be equal to 5.58 meters. Okay, so now we got the distances, so we can find the E's. Okay. So E1, that's going to be KQ1 over R1 squared. Okay, so K, 8.99 times 10 to the minus 9. So I'm just going to give you the answer here because you can multiply all this out. That comes out to be 5510 newtons per coulomb. E2, I'm going to take the absolute magnitude of it because we'll get the direction in just a second. Okay, and so that's going to be 14,350 newtons per coulomb. And E3, you know, K, Q3 over R3 squared, that comes out to be uh, 25,940 newtons per coulomb. Okay, now let's worry about directions. Okay, so we had our charges here. So for Q1, it's going away from Q1 because the Q1's a positive. So what I need to do is I need to find that angle right there. Well, we can find that angle because we know that the angle Q, uh, that uh, I guess we'll call it theta 1, that, that angle there for Q1 is going to be inverse tangent of 1.88 meters over 5.25 meters. And so uh, that comes out to be... 19.7 degrees. Okay. Now,
for Q2. That angle right there, theta inverse tangent of 1.88 meters divided by 2.75 meters, that's going to be uh, 34.4 degrees. But we know that because it's negative, that the actual direction is this way. So, so it's 34.4 degrees below the negative x-axis. And then finally for Q3, we know the direction is straight down. Okay, because uh, you're going to be going right down there. So that means we can find the components of each. So E1 vector. Okay, so E1 vector, remember that E1 was in an angle like that of, of 19.7 degrees. Okay, so E1 uh, vector is going to be E1 times cosine 19.7 degrees I plus E1 sine 19.7 degrees J. Okay, so you're just finding the components of it. Again, back to chapter 3 of uh, the textbook. So this, this is, again, back to physics 1. We're adding the electric fields just like we would add forces. Okay, so you probably did a vector lab or something in, in physics 1. So again, you added vectors. So we're just adding these three vectors here. And so uh, um, that means that E1 is going to be 5190 newtons per coulomb j plus 172 newtons per coulomb or sorry sorry it's 5190 newtons per coulomb i uh, plus 172 newton per coulomb j okay so now we want to figure out for e2 okay so for e2 remember for e2 we had Q2, we had it here, and it was going this way. So this angle right there is 34.4 degrees. So we, it's going to the left and down, so that means that E2 vector is going to be minus E2 cosine 34.4 degrees I minus E2 sine 34.4 degrees J. Okay, again going back to what you were doing in physics one, finding components of vectors. Okay, so E2 uh, turns out to be minus 11,840 newtons per coulomb I minus 8,107 newtons per coulomb J. Okay, then finally E3 it's only pointed. Uh, uh, it's only pointed straight up. Okay, so it's only pointed straight up because we had a positive charge here. So it just it was just going straight up there, and so that means that this is only going to be twenty five nine hundred newtons per coulomb j. So we've got e one. We've got e two. We've got e three. How do vectors work? From chapter 3. The total electric field will be E1 plus E2 plus E3. Okay. Nice thing about vectors. Doesn't really, what, doesn't really matter what they're vectors of. Okay. So we use the same techniques we already know. So we add up all the components. So that means we just add up all the X components, add up all the Y components. Okay. So that comes out to be minus 6650 newton per coulomb i plus 17960 newton per coulomb j okay and so uh if i want to find this we would say okay that's going to be you know for my position here that means it's going like that so so the 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 vector is like this okay uh, up and to the left, so we got a, a, a uh, the the a x is right there, the e y is right there. So that means we ought to be able to find that angle phi right there. So phi is going to be the 
inverse tangent of uh, EX over EY. I'm going to, again, take absolute value just to get this, this little interior angle right there. Okay, so phi turns out to be, if you plug in those values there, uh, that turns out to be 20.3 degrees. What about E? E is going to be the square root of EX squared plus EY squared. Okay, we have those components there. Plug it in. That's 19,200 newtons per coulomb. So the final vector, direction and magnitude, 19,000 newtons per coulomb at an angle of, now we said it's at an angle like that. We said this phi to vertical was uh, 20 point three degrees. Okay, so that should be 20.3 degrees. And so that means that we can now say uh, that relative to the x-axis, then this is an angle of 110.3 degrees with respect to the x-axis. I always like to say what you're measuring relative to because you could have said it's 19,200 newtons per coulomb at an angle that is uh, uh, 20.3 degrees uh, left of the y-axis. Okay, and that really says exactly the same thing as what you had before. Both of these are two different ways of saying the same thing. If you put either one of those on the test, I'd say, yeah, that's right. Okay, because you got the idea down, and I, I, I can like measure relative to whichever axis you measure relative to.